All right. Let's see. All right. Uh, welcome back. Let's see. Um, yeah. So we are. Uh, focusing in the second half of the semester on building a server application, right? This is the second part of the, um, uh, of this application that we've been building. Uh, uh, we, we focus first on the front end implemented using React.js running on a browser. And then the second half is, uh, is, that, is the second half of that, because it's kind of like the, si second, uh, the other side of the coin of the same thing. Uh, together, they make up the entire web application. Uh, but this part of the application is running outside of the browser, trying to address some of the limitations that we discovered uh, in the in the first half, right? That um, uh, we don't have a place to store information, uh, limited network access. Uh, and uh, so for the last couple of weeks, we've been uh, learning how to use Node.js to build um, HTTP servers, right? Uh, that uh, we can, um, uh, and we can, uh, and now we can move a lot of the uh, data management, right? Away from the browser, right? And move it over to the this this middle tier. And, um, and, and, and now we can escape some of the limitations of the browser. Uh, we could um, store this information to the, to the file system, or even better, as we're gonna show today, uh, we're going to finally put the data where it, was, uh, it belonged all the time, right? In, in, in a database, right? So we're gonna introduce today how to uh, install, configure, and uh, integrate with the, um, uh, with the database. And, uh, and our server is now kind of like gonna be in between these two layers, right? is going to integrate with the front end, right, through an HTTP uh, um, API, web API, RESTful web API. Uh, and now it's also gonna integrate with a, uh, with a library to connect to a database, right, and, and finally store this information permanently uh, for long-term storage. Uh, so yeah, so that's gonna be the focus for the next uh, week or so. Um, and, um, and that is going to be the culmination of all the, the skills, right? The various skills that, that, that uh, in, in a broad sense, you need for, for building a, an end-to-end -end, uh, full stack uh, web application, right? The, uh, the front end, the middle tier, the uh, database, plus you. Uh, and and so, so starting uh, next week, maybe the second half of next week, uh, we're gonna focus on you know, take, taking together all these skills, right? And um, uh, and give you an example on, on how is it that we would build a, a project, right, uh, from scratch. Uh, I mean, we have been building a, a project. We've been building the Canvas uh, application throughout the last uh, five or six uh, assignments, right? Uh, the the first three or four assignments were mostly the front end, right, and the last two is the the back end, the middle tier, and the uh, database, right. So we have been showing you how to you know go through the entire technology stack, right. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to revisit all these, um, including we'll learn how to integrate with uh, third-party APIs, uh, which is you know, not much unlike what we've been doing, uh, you know, communicating and integrating with, with our, our own API, right? We, uh, we have been uh, integrating the front end, right, with our own API, RESTful API that we built in our own Node.js uh, server. Uh, but, you know, we still have to explore, well, what about communicating with... Uh, APIs that we don't own, right? Maybe connect to uh, Barnes and Noble or uh, or Amazon or Best Buy or Yelp or any of these uh, web APIs that are out there that we don't control, right? They're not ours. Somebody built them, uh, and they made this uh, these uh, web APIs available to us, uh, mostly for free. Most of them for, are for free, uh, and so we'll illustrate how uh, we can integrate, right? Uh, not only to our own web API, but uh, other folks, right? Third-party API. So that's uh, that's uh, starting next week. So today, and and probably uh, uh, next week, we'll we'll talk about databases, integrating with uh, with Mongo database, um, and and how to how to you know uh, replace or refactor what we already have, uh, so that it can integrate with the uh, with the database. 
Um, yeah, so so the the uh, the project is due in on the twenty first. So uh, just um, uh, a little a little less than a, than a month from now, and and so so that um, so that Sunday is due, and then that Monday, right? Uh, we're going to start a, a um, three or four days of of demos, right? So uh, so soon the TAs are going to share with you a uh, a spreadsheet uh, with the time slot that they are available. Uh, and so if you, if one of you from uh, your team could um, register and, 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 you know, choose one of those slots. Um, and so, so the expectation is that you will demo what you, what you've built, uh, whether it's the extension of canvas with some new feature or the quiz, right. Uh, or whether uh, you built the generic social network application, whatever the, whatever it is that you, you, you built, uh, you will demo it that, uh, uh, that, that day. Uh, that hour uh, it is not in person you can, it'll be all on zoom so if you're traveling and you're away then you know sure you can you can do it as long as everybody can meet at that particular time slot um uh, also I, I will share with you a um a checklist uh for both versions of the project and that uh it's basically the the requirements document that you already have but in the format of a checklist and, and so so that's what the ta is going to use uh, to grade you, right? So um, I'll ask you to fill, please fill out the first part of that, of this form, right? And and which will be, uh, you know, the, the team members, right? Uh, you know, what sections are you in, right? Because, you know, we're allowing you to, to have multiple, you know, uh, use um, uh, uh, team members from various sections. So, so we'll, we need to know, right? You know, what team members are in what section, right? To make sure that, uh, we uh, reconcile everybody's grade, make sure that everybody's getting the same grade from the same team, right? So please fill that out. Um, and then, and then the, the rest of the form is meant to be filled out by the TA, by the day of the demo, okay? Uh, and so they'll basically you know, ask you, um, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a checklist format, um, you know, well, demonstrate that you can log in, demonstrate that you can register, you know, demonstrate that you can navigate to your profile, right? Uh, that you can edit your profile, that um, uh, you can create a quiz, you can delete a quiz, you can edit a quiz, you can add these questions. So that'll be in the form of a, of a checklist, which is, again, just basically the requirements document that you already have, right? But uh, intended for for the TA to quickly go through it with you, right? And you demonstrate it for them uh, and they can give you a, a grade uh, right there and that. Make sense? All right, so that's, that's the intent. Uh, so yeah, look, look for that. I'll, I'll, I'll be posting that soon. Um, the, the exam, uh, I thought it was gonna be the, the last day of, uh, the, of, of class, uh, but apparently we, the, we, we might've gotten a, a room and a, a time slot for for the for the for all sections to take the exam together. Apparently, I don't know. I, I, I'm still. Uh, I thought it was going to be the last day of uh, of class, but uh, we might have gotten a room. So let me let me find out, and I'll post what the actual date and and place and time is. Um. So, so yeah, it's not it's not that day. I need to update that. Uh, it, it might be that week. Uh, or, or the or the or the the that that Friday before then, right? Um, so so yeah, so that uh, now it, the the project is due on the twenty first. Although, you know, you, you're you're welcome to keep working even beyond the due date. Um, you know, if you, if you, if you're reg if you're registered to demo on on a wednesday right you still have monday and tuesday to keep working on it uh, we're not going to check to see if you made any changes to the project beyond the due date uh just be careful not to break the demo right before the demo uh you know you don't want to be working right to, you know till the last minute right and everything was working right and you're going to do the demo and it's all broken uh so so make sure that uh, you know you you tread lightly uh, after the due date and don't break anything uh, but again, you're, you're welcome to keep working. The, um, obviously, those that, uh, that register for the later time slots are going to have a couple more days to work than the uh, folks that might demo earlier. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's what it, it is what it is. Um, 
Uh, but that's why the, the due date is the 21st, right? Anything beyond that, it's, you're in your own. So that, day, that week is going to be very, very uh, busy and hectic. Uh, and I don't believe the TAs or myself are going to be very uh, available. Uh, so if you break something, I don't know that we, we're going to be able to help you much uh, that, uh, that week. So um, what else? The, the, um, yeah, the, uh, I do have to have grades by the 29th. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's this already that week is going to be you know very very crazy. Making sure everybody has everything, um, everybody has submitted or any any late uh, things that uh, we're we're trying to you know hunt down folks that might have uh, um, are late on some 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 assignments and whatnot. So what else? Um, I think that's it. Uh, any any questions? Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, as always, at the end of the uh, lecture, uh, you're welcome to stay, and uh, we can have you know one on ones and an office office hour, and uh, we can help you if you're uh, it, it, on, a, on an assignment or if you if you have a, a, any general questions. Uh, no quiz today uh, or this week. No quiz this week. Uh, we will resume next next uh, next week. And so from, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Anything else? All right. All right, then. Um, yeah, so, so for, the, for the last couple of weeks, we've been um, discussing how to build the, the server side of our multi-tier application, right? We, for the, for the first uh, month or two, right, we focus on the React application yes uh, and um, and and then if you remember we we had uh, our our database right uh, implemented here as JSON files on the client uh, and, uh, and 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 we could you know we introduced how to manage data and state on the front end right using use state uh, redux and and certainly we, we were able to manipulate the state on the user interface right we could create new courses delete courses uh, add modules and all that, right? In the that that we we discussed on assignment four, uh, and 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 we did hide a uh, a limit on what we could do, right? We uh, you know if we refresh the uh, the browser, all that state would go away, right? There was there was no mechanism for us to make those changes permanently, right? So so to to address that, uh, we uh, we focused on the second half of the application uh, where we moved. Uh, we moved uh, the um, the database, right? We moved the database uh, into uh, files or, or JavaScript files that contained the same data uh, as we had in the user interface. Uh, but uh, the difference is that now we could maintain the uh, the lifespan or the scope of this of this data and the state that changes over time, uh, at least for a longer period of time. We could at least survive a refresh on the client, right? Uh, we we had to integrate these two these two pieces, right? We, we would uh, create on the, on the server side, we, uh, we created several routes, right? That uh, uh, th these were integration points for the front end to be able to invoke these requests or as HTTP requests, you know, post, puts, deletes and whatnot. Uh, and, and then the, the server would respond with the data. Yes. Right. And, and some of those, some of those routes uh, could, would, would be used for uh, retrieving data. Uh, some of those routes were used for creating new data or updating existing data or removing data, right? And those were the basic four operations on any data type, yes? You know, create, read, update, and delete. Um, and, and so the assignment asks you to, you know, to practice this, uh, to, you know, replace or refactor the, the courses and the modules, Right, so that you know, creating routes for them and and uh, refactoring the user interface to be able to integrate the use the new this new user interface with the uh, with the server. Uh, we introduced the fact that uh, now this communication was asynchronous, right? Because it used to be that all this data lived on the client, right? So it had direct access to this data, right? But now because this data lives in a in a separate process, right, in a different server, you know, maybe even running you know halfway across the world, yes. Uh, these two processes connecting through uh, through a network, uh, this communication had to be asynchronous. So we introduced the fact that uh, 
uh, these requests go out from the client uh, asynchronously, right? And then they, the server responds uh, asynchronously. Uh, and we, we discussed, um, a, you know, async await, right? And, and how to handle, you know, asynchronous communication. Yes? Uh, so, so yeah. Um, now, obviously, the, uh, the, 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 the these data, the, this data that we're manipulating is, is still just files on a server. And, and yes, we could create, delete, update, and, and um, uh, this data, and it would live as long as the server was running. Uh, but if you restarted the server, you would, again, you would lose any of those changes, right? Uh, so a better solution might have been to instead, you know, instead of storing all this in memory, in the server memory, to maybe store it and save it to a file, right? We could, we could have certainly, you know, saved it to a file, to a JSON file, and then when we reboot it, we, were, we would be able to reread all that content, reconstitute the state, yes? Um, but we, we held off on that. Uh, we held off on that, uh, you know, focusing on learning about, you know, how to integrate these two, uh, these two layers, right? Integrate the front end, integrate the, with, the, with this new, new layer, right? We, we focus on uh, that there are some naming conventions, right? That uh, you use post, put, delete, get for different uh, operations, CRUD operations. Uh, that there are things such as RESTful APIs, you know, thing, you know, certain things you encode uh, in paths, some, some things you encode in, 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 uh, in query strings, some things you encode in the, in the body. So we, we focus on the integration of these two things, right? Not so much on the permanent storage part. Because today, right, uh, that's going to be the focus of the next couple of weeks. Right? We're going to learn, finally, where is it that this data actually should live, right? And it should live in a, in a database, right? In a permanent storage solution, right? Database that we are going to introduce today, right? Um, so, so very much like we, we went through the um, uh, refactoring of the integration between the front end and the middle tier today, right? We're gonna have to now focus on the integration of this middle tier and a database, right? Uh, and just like we moved the data from the client, from the front end, we moved it to the server. Now we're gonna to have to move the data from the server to, to, the, to the database, right? Uh, where it's, it should always have been, right? In the database, but we didn't have the skills yet to actually talk to the database. So that's what we're gonna to learn uh, today, okay? Um, so, so yeah, and, and, and just like there was, um, you know, a, a, the browser and the server are two different processes talking to each other through a network connection, the same thing is going to happen now from this, between the server and the database. Those are two going to be two processes running separately, right? Uh, connect, communicating through a network, right? And so, so it could be that our, you know, middle, you know, the, our multi-tiered application is a, you know, the browser process runs, you know, on the West Coast, right? And the server is running maybe here on the East Coast, right? And the database is running somewhere in Europe. Right, so this is, this could be you know geographically distributed application all over the world you know talking to each other through the internet yes right absolutely as long as you know the IP addresses of everybody you can talk you can put this anywhere in the world okay um, uh, obviously <laughs> everything that have been running has just been just has just been local hosts everything running on our machine but nevertheless you've been practicing on on deploying uh, your your browser application on Netlify right. And, and your browser is running here on, you know, on, in Boston, but Edlify might be running, you know, somewhere in North Carolina or anything, right? Wherever that, that server is. Uh, so, so yeah, um, let's, uh, let's, let's see how is it that we're going to move all this data over to uh, the database, okay? So, so the architecture of what we are focusing on is the following, right? The, the first half, you know, of the of the semester, we focus on mostly on the on the front end, right? Where we were maintaining state here in the React web app. Uh, last couple of weeks, we've been focusing on the Node Express HTTP server, right? And we moved the data from the React web app over to the Node.js Node HTTP server, and we built a whole bunch of routes, right? That would make the data available to the front end, right? Through a through an HTTP request. So today, we're going to move the data back even further, right, and dump it in a database, in a Mongo database here 
Uh, and we're going to focus on the in this integration point you know, between the database and the and the middle tier. Okay. Uh, so so yeah. Now MongoDB is uh, is one of uh, several databases that um, that fall under the umbrella of of no, uh, no SQL or non relational databases. Right. It's a it's a growing uh, family of databases that are becoming very very popular. Right and um, and and kind of you're know, competing against uh, incumbent databases that have been uh, with us for decades, right? The you know, MySQLs and Oracles uh, of the world have been um, have been around forever, right? And, and these relational databases have um, these uh, these relational databases have you know kind of been like the standard way of implementing uh, you know permanent storage solutions, yes, and and and, and so. So we're gonna we're going we're not gonna use a, a relational database. You can certainly take that use that as an as an option. Certainly you could uh, you know use relational databases for for what we're gonna do, right? Absolutely. And uh, but I thought maybe you you might have already done some uh, database uh, in other courses, and, and certainly those courses typically they focus on relational databases. Uh, so I thought uh, it might be useful to you know to explore other types of databases, in particular uh, Mongo. MongoDB, a non-relational database. Uh, uh, but but again, uh, this 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 really could have been any database, right? Um, Node.js has the libraries uh, for to integrate with any any vendor uh, out there, right? We're just going to be using Mongo. Okay. Uh, all right. So one pecul peculiarity peculiarity one peculiarity about uh, non-relational databases is that uh, they don't have a schema, right? Uh, unlike relational databases, the first thing that you do typically is that you create a table, right? And you specify the name of the table and you specify the, the fields, right? And then the data types of each one of the fields, right? And, and typically this is used uh, for the database to uh, validate the data, you know, to make sure that, you know, whenever you insert new records or when you do updates, right? Uh, the, uh, the database can validate, right? That the, you know, the correct fields is of the correct data type, okay? And, and so these fields, the, the names and the data types, typically we refer to them as constraints. You know, we're, we're saying, hey, database, I want you to make sure that you constrain the structure of the data so that, you know, this field is, uh, is an integer and this is a varchar, right? And this is a Boolean, this is a date. Uh, and typically you have these primitive data types that you specify each field. Well, no such thing in, in non-relational databases. Instead, uh, that, that uh, um, uh, that role or, or, or that responsibility of, um, of, of verifying and validating the structure, that falls on the application side, right? Instead of having the database do the validation, that typically is moved over to the, to the server side or to the application side. It is the application, right, that before it does the update, the insert, right, it will validate right, before actually sending it over to the server, right? Uh, so, so yeah, so that responsibility is going to move over to the our Node.js application, right? Um, another thing also is that we're going to be using what is called a model, or Mongoose model. Uh, this is equivalent to uh, I don't know who who has taken databases, three two hundred or anything like that, or yeah. So, so you might have you know played around with ORMs or object relational mapping tools, right? Where uh, you um you know uh, you know, typically you 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 create an API to talk to uh, to a database, uh, and you know, and, and that API typically is very specific to the schema for that table, right? Uh, you'll have a lot of inserts, updates, and deletes, selects everywhere, uh, and and if you if you do enough of these, you 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 realize that there's a, there's a pattern, right? They all look the same after a while. After you've done a couple of them, you see that they all look the same. The only difference is that the schema changes, right? The schemas are different, the fields are different. Right, the, the the data types are different, but the strategy is always the same. Okay, and and typically you use ORMs that allow you to to uh, generalize this process. Right, so instead of you writing all this code, all this boilerplate, what you do is that you provide a schema, right, uh, and then the ORM just provides you with generic select statements and uh, finders and updaters and create and, and inserters, right. So that you don't have to run them from scratch. Yes, right. So, so similarly, 
Mongo provides something similar, right? And they call them the models. And, and what you do is that you give it a schema as an argument, right? And then it provides you with a uh, all the uh, low-level boilerplate you know, CRUD operations to be able to create, insert, update, delete, right? Retrieve things from the database, right? So you don't have to rewrite this from scratch. Yes. Right. Uh, now, typically, these uh, these uh, models are very low level, right? They're very specific to the vendor, right? Whether it's implemented using Oracle or MySQL or Postgres or Mongo, you know, these APIs are very specific to the vendor. Yes. Um, and, and so, so typically, you we wrap that we wrap this low level API, we wrap it, you know, around with a higher level API of uh, that is very specific to our application, right? Uh, so that's that we're going to be introducing the uh, a DAO, a data access object, which probably you also saw in, uh, in databases. Uh, it's a very common design pattern, right, where we uh, create high-level APIs, right, that use the low-level API that talks to the database, right? It's very, very common that you, you know, you modularize all the data access, right, in one single reusable, probably a singleton uh, instance of, a, of an object, yes? So we'll do that today. And finally, we have the routes, which we've, we've been already talking about it, you know, for the last couple of weeks, right? And so, the, so the routes are going to be using the DAO. The DAOs are going to be using the low-level models that interact with the database. Yes? So that's the focus of what we're going to do today, right? Um, so, so, yeah. Um, so first of all, we, we're going to install the uh, Mongo database. Obviously, I already have it installed. Um, if you head over to this uh, uh, website, uh, you will you can download an installer for free. It's a uh, the Mongo uh, DB, uh, and um, and now you're, if you're on a Mac, you can install it using Brew. You know, Brew install Mongo Atlas, uh, or you can you can download it for your particular version of of Mac or Windows or uh, Linux, and it'll it'll install you it'll download an installer. You, you can download it on for for Windows. It's an, it's an MSI. Uh, and, and typically when you install it, it'll ask you if you want to install it as a, as a service, okay? Uh, meaning it'll, it'll install and, and it, will, it will start running uh, and, and it'll stay running, right? Uh, throughout, as, you know, whenever you reboot your machine, it'll restart your server, right? And, and you can go to your service settings on Windows and there you can manually stop or, or restart your, your uh, database server, okay? Uh, uh, or if you prefer to do this manually, you can you can use a uh, brew install. Uh, or also, you, if you download the installer, you can manually unzip the the uh, the, uh, the files if you prefer. Right? If you don't want to run it as a service, like I don't, I don't have it as a service. Uh, and you can it, it'll it'll uh, you you can unzip it. I typically put it under user local and then a date in, in, in a file a, di a directory where the executables for the servers are. And in there, you have some executables that you can run to start the server manually. So that's what I'm going to do. Right? That's what I have. Okay. Uh, so this walks you through that part of installing and, and configuring and running your uh, Mongo database. Okay. Um, also, part of the install, uh, you will also probably get a, um, a user interface right, called Compass right, that allows you to interact uh, with the Mongo database, as it's running, you know, it allows you to connect to a database, right, and and peruse through their collections and databases that you already have uh, in there. And um, so, so yeah, it's a nice little UI uh, that it's very common, right? Uh, most vendors will provide you with some user interface to interact with their uh, server applications. Yes. Um, so so yeah, that's that's uh, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, let's see. Um, so I already have uh, the, the database installed. Uh, again, I have it under uh, user, uh, local, uh, Mongo. So under there, there is a bin directory. There's a bin directory with the executables. And, the, uh, and there are two executables. Uh, one is a service, and one is the, uh, the standalone uh, daemon right? that you can run uh, from here from the, from the command line. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run the uh, MongoD. MongoD. Now, if you just run MongoD just by itself, it's going to start and it's going to it's going to stop, right? It, and what it, what it's doing, it's uh, it's looking for a folder 
right? Where it should store all the data, right? All the collections, all the documents, uh, where it should store its files, right? And and you can provide that as an argument. What I what I have in my local um, directory, in my home directory, I have this data uh, directory, and 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 in there I have that's where I typically tell Mongo to store all the data, right? For, for all my uh, sections and whatnot. So let's do that. We can start Mongo and tell it using DB path. Uh, we can uh, tell it that uh, I wanted to use the, the data directory. So, so now, now the database has started. And what it does is that it starts, the, the, the server starts and it listens by default, it listens at port 27,017, right? Uh, and this is very common, right? All, all databases will do something similar, right? They'll start up and they'll listen at a particular port, right? MySQL listens at, you know, 33 something or other, right? Uh, each, each server has a different port that they listen to. So that's, that's the default server uh, port that uh, MongoDB uh, is listening at. Everybody good? Okay. Uh, so we're gonna start also the, uh, the user interface, which is Compass. Uh, so Compass, when it when it uh, starts, uh, it asks you, right, where do you want to connect? Where is the server running? So we know it's running at local host, our, our local machine, uh, at port 27.0.17. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say, yep, connect to that. And it also has a, the, a history of all my connections. Uh, now, eventually, uh, we're going to be using the, this database is going to be running on a remote server, right? Uh, you know, just like just like we can run our React JS locally, yes. Eventually, we wanted to deploy it and run it on Netlify. You know, same thing with the server. Yes, we can run it locally on localhost 4000, but eventually, we wanted to run on AWS or Render.com or Heroku or whatever. Yes. So similar, similarly, our database here, yes, it's going to be running here at localhost, but eventually, we want it to be running on a remote database server, okay, which is also going to be Atlas. Right. So so um, in the um, in the Atlas uh, uh, Mongo here, right? They they have a, uh, as a product, right? They have the Atlas uh, database where you can host your database for free as long as you maintain it within a a, a reasonable amount of uh, of storage. Okay? Uh, so so the the assignment walks you through that, right? You know, create an account. And, uh, and, uh, and, you know, run, you know, creating a new instance of the database remotely, right? And importing data, right? To this remote database, okay? Uh, but for development purposes, we prefer to have everything running locally in our machine. You know, once we're okay, we're gonna move it over to the, all, everything to the remote servers, yes? Right, uh, so, so let's not do that just quite yet. So let's first get everything running uh, locally, all right? Okay, so, so here's a Atlas, here's a compass. So we're gonna connect. So it's connected to my local uh, database and it found that I've already been playing around with this uh, for the other sections. Uh, so let's, uh, let's create a new database for this particular section. Uh, so I'm gonna say, uh, create a new database. Uh, so this will be uh, Canvas, uh, so Spring 24, and this will be the uh, Wednesday class, right? Uh, and and by default, it wants me to create a new collection. A collection is the um, analogous to tables, right? In relational databases, right? Tables uh, that uh, and and so here we we use the the jargon is collection, right? Uh, so let's do that. So we're going to create a courses collection where where we're going to you know put in all our courses. So there it is. There, there it is. So we have a collection here which is empty. At first, because we have, we don't have any any courses yet, right? Uh, and and so in here we're going to have multiple collections, right? One for courses, uh, another one for uh, modules, and another one for assignments, right? Uh, another one for uh, users. Okay, uh, which right now they're all empty. Um, so so yeah, uh, let's um let's populate some of these. Right. And uh, I do give you the the the, the JSON files that uh, we've been using all along for the last several uh, months, right? So we're going to just reuse those JSON files. Um, I'm giving it to you again. Here in the assignment, we, I have a, a reference to them. 
you're you're welcome to use that. Um, and the assignment right here. If you so this is assignment six that uh, you don't have to start working on it just yet. You know, I know you're working on assignment five. I'm trying to cover some of this material as early as possible so that you can start uh, you know, using this, these skills in your own projects, right? So I'm trying to, even though you're, you're, not, you're not necessarily have to work on this quite yet, I, I, you know, I wanna bring this as early as possible so you can say, oh, I can start you know, planning for my project, right? And start using some of this, okay? Uh, so, so yeah, so here's, here's a, I'm giving you the courses JSON file. Let's download that. I'm going to download that and I'm going to put it in, um, uh, let's see, in the, um, season, season four spring. Uh, so it's here. Here's a node, uh, our database. So I'm going to put it in here. So courses.json. There we go. And, um, let's bring a, a few other things. Let's, um, Let's also bring the users. So raw, save it. And this is users. There we go. Uh, let's, uh, let's make sure that uh, it made it in the right place. So let's see, database, there it is. So courses.json and users.json. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so, so again, we don't want these files, right? To, to be used by the server. The server right, uh, should not contain any data, right? or, or at least no data that is meant for permanent storage. Right? It certainly could have its own JSON files for configurations, right? uh, for initialization, things like that, uh, 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 for preferences, uh, but, uh, but not data that is meant for end user you know, creation CRUD operations. Yes, that should live in the database. All right, so let's, uh, let's import some of these files, these JSON files into the database. Let's uh, head over to the, to the Compass application. So in courses, we can add data. You can either insert individual documents or records, right? In, um, in relational database, we would say you insert a row, right? Or you um, in, insert a, a, a record. Here we say we, we, uh, we work, we're talking about documents. Right, so it's a, it's kind of like a generic term, right? That uh, that this data is not really structured, right? A a, a row in a table kind of uh, already gives you a structure, right? That there's a there's a row and there's there are columns, right? So there's there's fields, individual fields. It's flat, right? And and each each column is usually just a primitive data type, right? Integers, right? Bar chars, uh, booleans, dates. Here we don't have that. Right, we are unstructured, and so it could be um, a JSON object, it could be an array, it could be a complex data type. Right? So, so it, it, it could really be anything. So we call it documents. Right, so it's very generic. So you, you can insert individual documents, or we're going to import an entire uh, JSON file. So we're going to select courses, import. And there they are. So it inserted all these documents, uh, and uh, not very interesting. Right, they're they're all very flat. Right, you just have each one of these just a field value, field value, field value. But you know, each one of these could have been, you know, a complex data type. Right, uh, we could have had, uh, you know, these fields really have an entire object inside. Right, and and those objects could have contained arrays. So it could have been a very complex data type, uh, each in, in, inside here. Right. Uh, also, again, there's no schema. Right, so none of these were validated against anything. Right, I could have made the mistake of misspelling these fields, right? And nobody would have uh, complained, right? And uh, I could have, you know, have uh, some records have credits as integers and some and another one inadvertently, it could have been a character, right? Again, no validation, right? The, the, it is not the responsibility of the database to, um, to validate uh, this data. Instead, it is, as we'll see in a minute, right? It will be the responsibility of the user interface. The, um, the application side. The application is going to do the, all, all this validation. Okay, right. Uh, the responsibility of the database is just to, you know, be able to as fast insert, update, delete, retrieve data as quickly as possible, right, and, and accurately as possible. All right. Uh, 
Okay, uh, let's also include uh, users. Let's import some users here. So insert some uh, JSON file of the users here, import. There we go. So we have uh, all the users that we had as JSON files are now you know, inserted into uh, our database. Everybody good? All right. Okay. Uh, so so this, this, uh, this user interface also allows you to interact uh, with the uh, data structure we just uh, inserted, right? With these arrays and objects and whatnot. Um, it, you, you can directly interact with them with, a, with this command line down here, right? It's this, this shell application, right? So let's, let's just explore a little bit. Uh, it's not gonna be our main mechanism of interacting, but it's useful, right? If you quickly wanna check something or verify, validate that uh, the data is making it in there. Uh, you know, just at least a few commands, right? Uh, that uh, would allow us to interact manually. Uh, and also, as we'll see in a minute, uh, it'll be useful to know that, you know, just like we can interact manually with some of these functions that we're gonna see in a minute, right? They're gonna be very, very similar uh, to the same syntax uh, that we're gonna use when we, when we, when we communicate uh, from, from uh, Node.js. Right, it says you know, you'll 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 find that it's a, a very very similar, right? Just like you would type it it, it uh, manually, uh, the same syntax applies when we do it programmatically, right? From Node.js. Uh, so for instance, it, notice that uh, the in the uh, in the shell it tells you what database are you currently looking at, right? And test is typically the default database, right? Uh, which is the um, uh, it's um. Uh, it's a it's a database that uh, is a, already comes whenever you install the database. It already it already creates some some of these default data in there. Uh, so you can list the uh, data, uh, the data sets in here. You can say show the the database the databases, right? So it lists uh, the database manually, you know, which obviously you have that graphically here on the left side, right? So not very useful. Uh, so you can have the graphical here, or you can do it manually, and you can also. Uh, Select which database are you going to work be working with? Very very similar to what you would do in in Postgre or MySQL, right? You know, very very similar commands. You can say use, uh, and then let's we can do Canvas, you know, SP twenty four and Wednesday, right? So we'll do that. And once we're in there, we can uh, also list what the collections we have so far. Again, these are these are the equivalent of tables, right? but we call them collections right? in non relational databases. Um, and um, and now now we can operate on any one of these collections uh, by selecting them. We can say you know, all commands that that uh, that apply or or uh, operate on on these collections. They all start with db db dot the collection and then the command. Right. So for instance, we can say uh, db dot uh, courses. Right. And then and then there are several functions that are available. Right. Uh, Again, very object-oriented syntax, right? So object dot, function dot, right, and so forth. Um, so, so these operations here are are operations that you can do on that specific collection, right? And the operations that we're interested in mostly are the the CRUD operations, right? You'd be able to create new instances of courses, you know, retrieve instances of courses, delete or update courses. Yes. Uh, so, so all the all the read operations they all start with find, right? Uh, find as in retrieve or read, and there's a quite a few few of them. So let's uh, let's just look at a few. Uh, they, the uh, the two more interesting ones are find and find one, right? So find, as the as the name suggests, uh, finds everything, finds um, uh, uh, all the records or all the documents that match a particular criteria. So find, all these are equivalent to the select, right, in a, in a relational database. Uh, so find, so for instance, just find, just find, uh, it's a function. And just like that, right, it's interpreted as in, you know, select star from courses, meaning retrieve everything. I don't have a where clause, right? I don't have any, uh, any filters or anything. I want everything. Give me everything, right? So if you do that, right, it, it retrieves, indeed, it retrieves all the records, right, in the all 21 uh, courses in there. Everybody good? Uh, but if you do want a, um, a, a criteria, if you provide a, a, a where clause, 
right? You can provide that as an argument to the find uh, function, right? In the form of a JSON object. You can say, and you know, pattern match. I don't want all the records. I only want the records that that you can pattern match against the criteria that I can give you here, right? So you can say, for instance, I only, I don't want all of them. I want all the ones whose, hey, let's see, um, you know, if we if we look at the um, at the uh, courses, uh, some courses like rocket propulsion are in the department D one two three, and and aerodynamics is also in the same department. See that, right? In the same department, and then some of the other ones are in different departments. So we can filter and say, well, I don't want all the courses. I only want the courses in a particular department, right? So you could say, um, you know, where here? You say uh, not where, sorry. Uh, you can say department colon and give it a value. So D one, two, three. All right. So if you do that, it comes back with the three records, right? That matched that pattern. And what it does is that it, it, it looks, it, it iterates over all the records looking for the one who has the field equal to the pattern that we provide as an, as a, as a pattern match. Yes. If it finds them, it goes into the results and then it displays them. Pretty good. Um, and you can you can also uh, filter by individual, right? So you can say, you know, if you if you have a, a where not the department, but maybe the uh, name, you know, where name is equal, you know, space craft design, right? That would return just that one object. Yes, All right. Uh, so anyway, there there are quite a few other opera, uh, operators. Uh, as we'll see in a minute, there's a this find one, there's a find by ID, uh, there's a, there's quite a few others that that, that we'll be uh, introducing uh, soon, right? Uh, in, in particular, is uh, uh, operations on whether you're operating on primary uh, uh, primary keys you know, pr uh, or uh, unique keys, right? Or are you uh, operating on um, uh, fields, right, that are declared as unique but are not keys? Right, so so depending, for instance, uh, a username uh, might not be the primary key, but it is unique. Right, so 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 queries typically would return just one single document, right, and so you typically would use maybe find one as opposed to find, right, and we'll see examples of that in a minute. Uh, so other operations that uh, you can you can uh, work on is uh, is uh, being able to uh, to insert, right, where you can insert one document or insert many documents. Uh, you can uh, update uh, one document, right? Uh, or you can uh, delete one document or delete many documents, right? So those are the basic uh, CRUD operations that are available. Right? So what we're gonna do is that uh, instead of covering these here manually, right, at the command line, let's see that uh, we, can, we can do this same type of operations, but programmatically, right? You know, with a library, right? That's going to allow us to do this, but from a Node.js application, right? That's that's definitely much more interesting than doing it manually, all right? Okay, let's see. All right, um, yeah, so how do, we, how do we connect? What we wanna be able to do is implement this, uh, this connection, right? We want to, we want to be able to do this connection right here, right between the server, right, and the Mongo database, right. So what we're going to do is that we're going to install a library, right, that is going to allow us to create a connection right, to the server, right, and then send commands back and forth. Right, so we're going to run the find and the deletes and the updates here from the from the server, and those commands are going to go out to the server. The server is going to operate on them, right, and then it's going to respond with with results. Uh, very much like we did with Express, yes? The Express library was used to create the communication between these two, right? We installed, we installed Axios here on the front end, and we installed Express on the server, right? And Axios was, we used it to send the requests, right? And, the, and, the, and we used the Express library to be able to receive those requests, right? Tie them to, you know, map them to functions that could, execute right and calculate the response and then it sends back the response back to axios 
and then Axios captured that re that response and then updated the user interface accordingly. Yes, right. So we're going to do something similar on this end. Right? We're going to install a a library here on the server, right, so that we can communicate with the server. Right? We're going to establish a network con a connection with the server and then use the uh, the API right to be able to send requests back and forth. Make sense? Right. All right. So let's do that. Okay, so, so to do this, right, we're going to go to the to the server application or Node.js application. I'm going to stop it for a second, and we're going to install the Mongo.js library. Right. So the Mongo.js library, uh, you can visit it here at Mongo.js. Yeah. Um, and I. You know, I encourage you to read through the documentation. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate how, how to use it. Uh, we're only going to cover maybe, you know, the, the only like 10% of what you can, that, that, that we're going to need for, for, for Mongo. There's plenty more uh, interesting things that the library can do, uh, but uh, it's the, it's the 10% that allows us to do 80% of everything. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the other 80%, right, is that, uh, that additional gap. And again, I encourage you to take a look. Same thing with Express. Uh, Express will only cover right, the, 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 the basics of what you can do with the Express library. Uh, and again, I also encourage you to explore more about the Express library. It's a very, very powerful library. Uh, so yeah, so basically what we're gonna do is that we're going to install this library, we're going to import it, right? And then we're gonna use the connect uh, function to establish a connection with the with the database, right? So very much what the um, our Compass application did, right? Our Compass application also established a network connection to the port, right? The uh, local host. So local host is 127.001, same thing, right? Uh, this is the IP address of my local machine, right? And then the port where it's, it's listening at. And then you can put at the end, right? What database are you talking about, right? Which which actual database you want to talk to? In our case, it would be you know Canvas SP24 uh, Wednesday. Right, so let's do that. Um, let's go to our server and let's install npm install a mongo mongoose. Okay, npm install mongoose. All right, so it installed it. Make sure that it's um, that it adds it as a dependency, right, to your package JSON, right, that that gets updated. Um, and and so once we do that, let's restart the server. So we'll do um, Nodemon. There's still still up and running again. And now that it's installed, right, we can go to our app.js right, and establish the communication. We're going to import mongoose library. And once we have the mongoose library, we can establish a connection like that. Right. So it's going to connect to a local host, connecting to our local machine, and the server is listening at 2717, uh, I believe. And the database that we're gonna connect is the one we just created seconds ago, which is Kanban. Kanban, you know, SP24, and um, Wednesday, okay? There it is. So that establishes a connection to the database, right, to that specific database that we just created. Uh, the server didn't crash, so it looks like it uh, successfully created the, uh, the the connection. And uh, so now, right, we want to start talking to it. So, so to start talking to it, it, we have to first establish the validation part, right, the, the the schema part. We need to describe, right, you know, what it is that we're talking to. In our case, we're going to talk to users. Uh, we're going to talk to courses, modules, assignments, right. Uh, all that, all the, all those data structures that we are installing in the uh, database, right? So, so let's explore first uh, courses, right? Let's do that. So, in our uh, courses here, we can um, uh, create the, a schema here. We'll call it the schema.js, and and here is going to we're going to describe the um, the, the 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 collection, right? And the collection is of courses looks like this, right? We have a uh, name, number, start, start date, end date, department, credit, 
Uh, looks like these are all strings. Not very, not very interesting. Um, I, I guess we can grab this as a, as a sample, right? And on the server side, uh, we can um, uh, just paste this as a as a as a cheat sheet. Uh, we're going to import mongoose from the library, and we're going to create a new uh, schema. We'll call it the course schema, right? And uh, and then. And then here we're going to list each one of the fields uh, and, and then describe the, their data type. So name is a string, uh, number is also a string, not very interesting. Uh, start date, I guess this should be a date. Uh, date, uh, department, the string and credit is a number. And description is a string. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, so we this is very similar. It's it's the equivalent of having declared a table, right, in a relational database. Uh, but in a relational database, you do that in the database side, right, using the database tools. Whereas here, this lives on the application side. Right? It's the application that's talking to the database, right? Not the database itself. Right? And the other thing that uh, we might need here is to establish, you know, where, you know, what is the name of the collection that is running on the database, which is courses, yes? And we can override that. We can say the name of the collection that we want, but we know it's, this is a collection that already exists, right? And it's already been given a name of courses, yes? Right? Uh, so once we have that, uh, once we have that, uh, we can create the, well, first we need to uh, export this. So we're going to export default the course schema. Okay. And once we have the schema, we can also create the, the model. So the model, again, it's the equivalent of an ORM, right? An object relational mapping, but here there's no relational, right? So uh, there's, um, uh, so here's an ODM, object uh, data mapping, okay? Uh, so let's uh, let's do that. Let's, uh, again, import mongoose, right? And we, we're also going to need the schema. We're going to import the uh, course schema from .js. Very good. Uh, and we're going to create our course module. Uh, mo model, sorry. Model. Right? And the way it's created is by using mongoose model. We give it a, a name. Right, which um, we just have to remember that this name is unique right, for the entire application. So once you give it a model, a name, that model is unique. Right? And we'll see later on uh, why is it important. Right? And this, this, is, this is going to later on allows us, allow us to uh, implement something that looks like a relationship, but not quite. Uh, because again, this is, uh, these are non-relational databases. Right? So there's no such thing as a primary key, foreign key, Right, or, or that you can relate a record from one uh, from one table to another record from another table because they again there are no relationships. But uh, you can still use it as if it were a relational database, right? Where certain fields in one document might refer to documents in another collection. Yes, for instance, modules typically have a as one of the fields, you have the, the number of the course that it belongs to, yes? Right, so typically in a relational database, the way you would implement that is that that would be a foreign key, right? The course would be a foreign key and the value would be the primary key of the other table, correct, right? But here we don't have the equivalence of that. Uh, but nevertheless, we would be, uh, we, we, um, we would want to implement something like that, right? Where certain records or documents in one collection are related to other documents in another collection, yes? And to do that, uh, we'll need to, we'll need this name, we'll need this name, right, to be unique, right? We'll come back to this a, a little later. All right, so once we have the model, the model contains basically, if you look at the model, uh, the course uh, model, you have uh, a whole bunch of functions in here. See these functions? Right, they look very, very similar, right, uh, to all the functions that we were playing around 
with just two minutes ago at the command line, right? But you have them now available here, right, in this API, okay? Um, you have the find, find one, find by ID. And so these two are natively supported by the Mongo database, right? This one is a syntactic sugar version, this find by ID. This find by ID is basically a wrapper around find one. Uh, but your, 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 your filter is the primary key. Yes? So this is basically a wrapper around find one. Uh, you also have all your constructors uh, where in, instead of insert, you have create. Create, which allows you to insert a new record in the database. Uh, you have your deletes. You have delete many, delete one, right? These are the same ones that are available at the command line, right? At the shell, shell uh, program. You have the uh, update. You have update one and update many, right? Uh, so so we'll, we'll, we'll be using this in a second, right? Okay. Uh, so, so but, but not from here. What we're going to do is that we're going to export this. We're going to export this and, and now use this model to implement all the CRUD operations that we would need, right? And we're going to wrap all these low-level functions, right, that are very are very um, uh, uh, idiosyncratic uh, about that specific vendor, right, the, uh, the Mongo uh, vendor, we want to have a higher level API, right, that is more specific to our needs, what we want to do, right? So for that, right, we're going to implement the DAO. Right? So for the DAO, so this is the DAO, four courses. Right? And in here, you would have functions such as um, a const, a, you know, export, const, um, we want to be able to create a course, right? And we want to be able to um, you know, do all the CRUD operations, right? CRUD. So we want to be able to export const, um, find all courses, right? We want to be able to find a course given a primary key, yes? Uh, we want to maybe um, yeah, update a course. We want to maybe delete a course. So these are all the basic CRUD operations, right? Create, read, update operations. And, and, and typically, you know, they take arguments. If you're going to create a, a course, I need you to give me the object that you want to insert or create in the database, right? Uh, update a course. Typically, you'll give me the primary key of the course that you want to update. And then the course object will contain the fields that you want to modify. Maybe you want to modify the title, the starting date, things like that, right? And then delete course, typically you'll just give me the primary key of the course that you want to remove. Right? So again, these are all basic operations. There might be many, many more, right? Maybe you want to not only find them by course ID, maybe you want to find them by department. Yeah? yeah, that might be a good one, right? So, you know, export, yeah, by department. Wait, are you listening to me? <laughs> um, or, or find it by uh, giving a student or maybe uh, find courses uh, and, and by instructor and get the instructor. So there are many ways that you might want to filter the data. Yeah, it's again, these are very specific to your application. Right now, now here the implementation is how would you implement that very specific application use case? How would you implement it? using the actual tables, the actual collections that you have underneath, yes? Uh, if you're using MySQL, you would implement it using MySQL's API, yes? If you're using Oracle, you would use Oracle's API. Here, we're gonna be using Mongo's API, yes? Right? And what the DAO does is that it kind of hides, right, the rest of the application. It, it, um, it shields the rest of the application from the idiosyncrasies of any one particular vendor that you choose, right? If tomorrow I want to re-implement this and use a different database, right? I just have to modify my DAO, yes? The rest of the application doesn't even care. You know, as long as the, the interface is the same, yes? It's the same name, the same parameters, and you're returning something that is equivalent, I'm good, I don't care. Use, a, use uh, some other database, you know, swap, uh, whatever vendor you want. That's that's the beauty of the, you know, of the data, the DAO um, uh, 
a design pattern, right? It shields the rest of the application from the idiosyncrasies of, of the vendor, okay? Anyway, um, yeah, so, so let's, uh, let's implement this. We'll need the, the model. Let's import the model. So import the uh, course model from the model.js, okay? And, and here, the implementation is, is trivial, right? It's just gonna return, it's gonna return whatever the course model.find returns, right? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's what we typed at the command line, remember? We did courses, you know, d, you know db.courses.find and retrieve all the documents, remember that, right? Um, and um, uh, now we could, we could write this differently, right? Since it's one line, since it's a single line, right? We could abbreviate this even further like that. Yes, right, it's just a single line. So find all courses just returns whatever course model dot find returns. Yes, right? Uh, find course by ID, that also is trivial. You do course model find by ID already Right, the model provides a syntactic sugar implementation of find one, right? Wraps it around it and it, it, it filters by the primary key that we pass in as an argument. Uh, department, uh, that we need to implement ourselves, right? So here would be you know, find, we use find, and then you know, this is a, kind of like the query that we implemented, right, in this shell. Right, we implemented that, right? Remember that? Where we um, had here, you know, find, there it is, right? Find and then department colon and then the, the string of the department. Yes, right? Uh, so which is exactly the same thing that we're typing here, but now we're doing it programmatically. Yes, right, very, very nice. And now typically, uh, you know, since, since the, uh, since the uh, uh, parameter is the same name as the property, right? We can uh, we can rewrite this to be even more terse, right? Uh, just like that. Instructor. I don't believe we have a field for instructor. Unfortunately, we don't have a field for do we? No, we don't. Okay. Um, I guess we could create one. We can uh, insert here. We can edit it. And um, can we create a new field? Add a field after descriptor, yes. We'll say instructor, right? And the value is Alice. Update. Okay, we updated that. So let's, let's add two, let's add another one. So this one will be, we'll edit and add another one. Let's say instructor and then Alice. Oops. Instructor and Alice. So presumably we should be able to uh, query and retrieve all the courses by Alice. We can test it. We can update that and we can go to uh, here and say, okay, well, let's, let's, let me find the courses whose instructor instructor is Alice. So it retrie retrieves those two courses. Yes, right? So, so we can now go back here and say, okay, well, I do have that, right? So this would be, right, course model dot find instructor, right? Uh, create course is also trivial. It's course model dot create, and that inserts the, the course. It update the course, to so update the course, so update course uses update one that takes two arguments, takes two arguments. The first argument is like the other ones. It's just a filter, you know, for pattern matching, right? So again, this is being pattern matched against the field instructor, right? And it's, it's finding those, those objects, those documents whose instructor matches the parameter. Here, same thing. The first argument is for pattern matching, okay? Uh, so meaning I am only, I'm only going to update, I'm only going to update one document, the one that matches this criteria, right? Only the one whose primary key matches the argument of ID, right? So once I've identified that document, then, 
you can provide the updates in the second argument, right? Uh, and, and here, uh, you can specify what is it that you want to update. So, so I'm going to assume that the object that comes in as an argument, right, it's going to be a JSON object, yes? And it's going to have all the fields that I want to update and their new values, right? So I have like, I don't know, like 10 fields. I might update maybe the title, I might update the start date, you know, maybe just those two fields, right? Uh, so so there's, a, there's a really simple operator that can automatically, right, pattern match what the fields are and then replace them with the new values, right? That's easy, that's an operator called the set operator, like that. So this one will automatically, right, look for the fields in the new object, Right, compare them against the records of the same property and we'll swap out the values right, for the old values or we'll replace them with the new values that are in the course object that we're sending over. Yes? Right? And it will uh, update that one uh, document. Yes? Uh, and finally, delete. Again, we're going to delete one document. And here we can provide the, the filter. Which document are we removing? the one whose primary key matches the, the parameter argument here. Yes? Okay. Um, all right, so let's try a few of these. Let's try a few of these. Uh, let's see. Um, so we've exported all these. So in, um, in, our, in our routes, for our um, routes here, notice that we are using we're using this uh, database, right? Uh, which is just a file, right? And just, you know, returning arrays and whatnot, right? For instance, with this retrieval here of the courses is retrieving the courses under these, this object, this courses here, right? This card. So what we, want, what we want to do is replace that, right? We want to refactor this. Let's check to see, make sure that this still works, right? We have it mapped to app.get, right? Um, API courses. Let's see. That this should still work, right? Um, let's see. So we go, you know, localhost four thousand slash API courses. This still re retrieves the these are the courses uh, in our J on, on our JavaScript file. Yes, right. If uh, you know, if we what we want to do is is uh, kind of like replace this. We don't want this anymore. So if I do that and I try to hit this again. Notice that it fails, right? It says, oh, I don't know where, where DB is. It's gone, right? The, the, that, that variable is no longer available. What's going on? So what we, got, we want to do is replace this right here. We don't want to retrieve it from the courses anymore. We want to retrieve it from the, from the database, yes? So let's bring, to do that, let's bring in the DAO. So we're going to import all the, fu all the, all the functions um, from the uh, DAO, I'm going to name it as the local uh, variable called DAO. So it's going to be an object that's going to contain all those functions from the DAO.JavaScript. So, so DAO is it's an object that contains all these functions, right? So what, what we want to do here is, is say, well, I want to grab all the, all the courses like that. And I want to respond like that, right? Almost. It's almost as trivial as this, right? Not quite, right? Uh, so notice that we're using the DAO, retrieving the find all courses, saving it into a local variable, and then responding with the courses, yes? Right? Uh, it's almost as trivial as this. So the problem here is that we're, we have the same issue right, that we faced when we were integrating the front end with the server, right? And that communication between the browser and the, and the Node.js server, that's an asynchronous communication. Yes, right? And if you remember, uh, Axios, when we said axios.get, right? What came back was not the data itself right away, right? Uh, it was, remember, it was a promise. Uh, and then we, you know, we showed you that ugly, you know, promise dot then, yada, 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 syntax, yes? Uh, and then, and then we say, oh, okay, well, there's an easier syntax to get today, which is the async await syntax. 
we have the same issue here. Right? The communication between the server and the database is also asynchronous. This communication, this find all, right, which is going, which is using, is using the um, this this right here. What this returns is not the actual courses. It returns a promise that you can then register, and then it calls you back. But we don't have to deal with that. We can just simply declare the function as a sync, and we can make this an await. And that's it. Right now we are playing in our asynchronous uh, mode, right? Okay, um, yeah, so let's try it out. Let's see if this blows up. So if I refresh now, uh, returns as an empty array for some reason. Why empty? Uh, find all courses. Uh, find, find model, uh, schema, uh, courses, collection, and the database is uh, Kanban. Oh, wait, Kam Kanban? Is that the name of the database? Oh, Canvas, sorry. Canvas. I've done way too, way too much uh, software engineering. <laughs> Canvas, there we go. Okay, let's try it again. There it is, right? Now it's retrieving right, the uh, database, the, the content from the database. Notice the instructor fields, right? That were not originally in the JavaScript file. So this is indeed coming from the uh, database, right? Um, and uh, uh, so yeah, so perfect. Uh, let's, uh, let's try a few more, right? So for instance, um, let's uh let's uh re-implement uh, some of these in the routes for instance to find course by id again we don't want to use the db anymore instead what we want to do is um grab the course ra grab the course from dao dot find course by id but again we have to remember that all this communication is now asynchronous right don't forget we need to tag this with async now right and put an await here okay so if we go back uh, and we if we provide the id provide the id you know, it retrieves that one particular document by their id make sense right okay uh let's see what else um we could um uh, create a course update course so for all these i would need post put and delete right uh, so I'm going to leave that to you. The assignment walks you through re-implementing all these using async await and using uh, the database, right? As opposed to using the array, right? And so, so yeah. Uh, all right. So let's let's practice this again, right? And and so that we can revisit uh, some of this again. So, so there's more to this than just declaring the primary keys uh, or the uh, these fields and the primitive data types like we did here. There's more than that. So let's, uh, let's do what we just did, but let's do it now for users. And we, we, uh, we can, we can uh, discuss, right? What other constraints do we want to put in here, right? Right now, the only constraints have been their data types, right? Making sure that certain things are strings, certain things are dates, certain things are numbers. Yes, uh, but there are more constraints that are relevant. So let's, let's, uh, let's discuss a few. All right. So so let's do this again, but for users, right? So in users right now, we have routes for uh, retrieving users like this, right? And that should still work, right? So this is API users. So this is coming from where? It's coming from this database right here, right? And if I comment it out, right? I will have broken that integration point, right? And my user interface is expecting this, right? Uh, so I've also broken my user interface as well. Uh, so so let's let's re-implement this, but using uh, Mongo, right? So let's see. Users will create the uh, uh, schema. Again, the schema describes the structure of the uh, data. Uh, and so we'll first have to import uh, Mongoose, right? And um, we'll create the uh, user schema, right? And And then... Uh, the collection is uh, users, right? right? And we're going to export this. Okay, so let's let's discuss that's this schema. So the fields, the fields in there are 
If we go to users, these are all the fields. So let's copy this. Uh, most of them are strings. So again, not very interesting. Uh, so let's put them in there. Uh, so the ID is a string. And the username is also a string. Uh, the password is also a string. First name, last name, email. Their birth will go with a date. And role is a string. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So not very interesting, but but let's let's look at this uh, again, right? So for instance, some of these, you know, well, well, right now the only constraint that we are providing is that you know these fields should be of a specific data type, so it'll do that validation. Yes. But we could go a little further. For instance, um, uh, the ID should be unique. And also the username should be unique, right? So we can add those constraints. So, so again, if, if the only constraint is the primitive data type, then this is enough, right? You can just provide this, the, the type and you're done, right? But if you want to provide additional constraints, right? Uh, this can instead be an object, a whole object where you can not only give it the, the primitive data type constraint, but you want it to be unique. Right, and you want to have a default value, right, or that it's required, right, or that it has an, it's a numeric data type, right. You can provide all sorts of uh, constraints, right. So let's take a look at this. So, for instance, let's look at username. So, username not only is the type needs to be a string, okay. Uh, so, just providing the type is equivalent, just providing the type as a constraint is equivalent of just using the data type. Is the equivalent, but if you use an object like this, you can add additional constraints. Right? You can say that this is it's unique, meaning um, it should not allow right two records that have the same username. If you try to insert a record that has the same username, Mongo will um, will throw an exception, saying, "Oh, you can't." Right? Also, it's required, meaning. If you provide an object that does not have a username, I will fail it, right? I will not let you insert a record unless it has a username. Uh, so same thing with a uh, password. Not only is the type a string, uh, but it's also required, but it doesn't have to be unique. You know, it's okay for two people to have the same password, right? Uh, but I will fail it if you don't give me the password. You have to at least give me a username and password. Right. Everything else is, is optional, right? You can come later on and tell me what your first name is, your last name. You know, once you've created the record, you can come into your profile and fill out your profile later. So I'm not going to require it, okay? Um, uh, what else? So the role, yes, it's a string, but it's not any string, right? It should be from, you know, an enumerated set of valid tokens. Right, you can't just type anything you want for the role. It should be from a uh, um, from a set of well-known strings. So you could say that this is an it has a has a has a default value. Right, so it has a default value uh, of student, uh, and the it's from it's it's taken from a um, enumerated number of valid. Uh, value so student faculty admin those those are these are the only three possible values for this string right can't be just any right um oh uh, yeah that's it so this these are examples on providing you know a depend um a constraints additional constraints on the on the field all right okay uh we have the schema let's create the model the model is going to be very similar to the other model that we had earlier so it's going to be um uh, so model uh, JS will uh, import mongoose just like before. We'll import the uh, user schema and we'll create the uh, user model uh, just like that. So mongoose.model user again that name needs to be unique. Right? You can't have two models with the same name. Right? The you'll get an exception. You say no, you can't have these two models. And, and then the user schema. 
Uh, and finally, we're going to export this. And now we can focus on the DAO. So uh, DAO, you can say uh, DAO.js. I'm going to import the 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 the, uh, the model. So say import the user model from model.js. Like that. And here's we're going to have the CRUD operations for the user, right? So we want to be able to you know, retrieve all the all the uh, users, uh, retrieve the user if you have a primary key of the user. And we want to be able to you know, find them by email. So find one, and then we can give it the email like that. Right. Uh, so again, you can create all sorts of uh, Finders, right? Another one that we might need, you know, for like, for instance, logging in, uh, or or um, like for when you're registered, you would like to see, check to see that the username is not already taken. Right? So it would be useful if you could go find me a record. Is there already a per, a, a record with that username, for instance? Right. So so let's uh, do that. Right. We're going to export. You know, const find user by username. Right, and find one uh, username. Okay. Um, also, if you if you log in, you you like to you like to be able to check to see if indeed there is a record with that username and password. Right. So, so we want to be able to you know export cons find user by credentials, and the credentials presumably is an object that contains username and password. I'm I'm going to explicitly say this so that it's clear. So we're passing username and password, and we're filtering. We're finding one record uh, that has a username and password, like that. Okay. And finally, we can create new users, right? For registering new users, we can we can insert uh, users. We can update a user. So somebody wants to, you know, provide a first name, last name, date of birth, right? Email, all those all those fields. We don't have that value for any of that, right? But in the profile, we should be able to provide a form where they can fill out an update of their um, their user information, right? And and then delete a user, right? And there we go. Okay. Um, again, you can have many more, right? And, and again, so, so this is this is an kind of like an adapter, right? Pattern where you have a high level uh, API, right? Written in lower level that is just in, you know interacting or uh, massaging the data right so that it can talk to another uh, api yes uh, okay um oh schema do we not save this all right uh, now going back to the to the route right we we broke it here because we we um you know we uh, uh, uh commented out the uh the the, the data access um, so let's uh, let's rewrite that, right? Let's rewrite it. And so right now it's broken, I believe, right? So refresh, it's gone. Uh, so let's rewrite it so that we can bring in the DAO. So we're going to import star as DAO from DAO.js, uh, and what and, and instead of db.user, right? Instead of that, we're going to you know you know const users DAO find all users respond with users. But remember. These are all asynchronous communication, right? So, so that we have to uh, tag all these to be async, right? And we have to tag this all as await, right? So if we go back now and refresh, right? Here we are, right? We got the usernames back, uh, the, the users collection back, right? Uh, we, we, uh, we can implement all these other ones as well, right? So here's the ID. So instead of finding things from a database, right, uh, from the, uh, database right we're going to const uh, user uh, await dao find user by id and then respond with the user we need to tag this as async like that and let's see if this works so we can provide the primary key here there we go right so that's working um uh, uh, Finding a, a user by uh, their username, their credentials, right? Uh, I don't know that we want to expose that uh, to the user interface, right? Um, 
know, I don't know that the username phase uh, might care to find somebody by their username. Probably all those would be uh, a, you know, APIs that would be used on the server side, right? When you're registering, when you're registering, then you would find somebody with their username and you would fail it, right? If there's somebody already with that username uh, or when you're logging, you can check to see, you know, does that person uh, have that username and password, right? So we'll take a quick break. We'll come back, we'll, we'll revisit all these other CRUD operations in particular, right? Uh, how it would pertain to, you know, authentication, right? Of logging in, registering, logging out, right? Creating new users, uh, going to your profile information, you know, editing your profile information, saving that information to the database and all that, all right? Okay, we'll come back right after these messages. All right. Am I sharing? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, we we uh, just uh, created right um, a couple of uh, CRUD operations that you know, allows us to retrieve data from the from the user model, right? And the user model allows us to do all sorts of CRUD operations on the on the user's collection. Yes. So so let's uh, let's uh, let's you know let's uh, let's build. Well, let's uh, let's replace and re or uh, refactor right the the routes that we are, are were already implemented that allowed us to interact with the with the user's database. Right. So anywhere we would see the um, the DB dot users like we did for users and user ID, right? Let's replace, you know, so that we don't use the array anymore. Right? Let's not use the DB dot users anymore, right? So let's uh, let's uh, refactor all these. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see. Um, so so this one says you know app that post. This is for creating a new object, right? Creating a new, a new user, right? That was being added to the array of users, right? Uh, so the way we, 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 the way we would replace that is that uh, we would no longer use the array. You know, instead, right, we would use the um, DAO.createUser. And then we would pass in the user objects to the database to be inserted. Now, obviously, we would make, have to make sure that you know, all the fields that the database is expecting, at least the username and password, at least are there, right? Um, uh, so that, that we would need to, you know, check to see if the user interface, uh, make sure that it is sending us at least the username and password, right? Because those are required, right? Also, um, you know, have to make sure that, you know, whatever username we're passing in is not, is not a, a repeated username, right? Otherwise it will fail it, right? If, and, uh, and then uh, typically the, what would re respond is the new user that was actually inserted would be, would be, um, uh, it would return the user, the new user. So the new user that was actually inserted would come back from the create user. Uh, and this is the one we would, we would dis, uh, you know, return to the, uh, to the client, right? We would uh, not forget to add the async await here, like that. Um, what else, let's see, put, uh, similarly, right, we get the ID, we got the uh, user in the body, and instead of updating the array, instead of updating the array, um, we're going to first add the async here. We're gonna do the updated user. So we do update user, the ID, Pass in as an argument and the new user up. Now, here we have to be careful. The what comes back when you do an update of the user, it doesn't actually come back with the updated user like our AI thinks here. Actually, what it comes back with is an with a, is a status object, right? Uh, reporting on whether it was successful, right? How many documents were actually modified, right? If any, right? And so it's really a status object so it's the status here right? and that's we're going to return just that status so that the user interface can you know can use the status to report 
on whether, you know, sorry, we, were, we weren't able to update anything or, you know, as a, as a feedback saying, yep, we were able to update your record, right? And we can use that on the user interface. Um, in the uh, delete, again, we're not gonna use the array anymore. Uh, always remember to put in a sync. And um, here we would um, do a, again, the up, the, the delete is also comes back with a status. So DAO.delete user, the ID, and we would respond with the status, okay? Anyway, uh, we can come back to this a API a little later, right? We'll build a little uh, UI to, uh, to interact with, uh, with all these, um, with this API. Uh, we'll build like a table, right? And be able to insert, update, delete uh, each, each record. What I did wanna focus on is uh, being able to authenticate the user, right? Either, either be able to register as a user or be able to log in, right? And then, you know, to go and fetch the currently logged in user, right? And right now, again, it's using the array, right? Let's, uh, let's see, make sure that that's still working before we break, break the whole thing. Uh, let, me, uh, let me bring back the, uh, the, the array uh, just to make sure that the old implementation still works and, and we'll replace it with a database, yes? Right, so let's see how it used to work. Uh, let's see. Um, so we have the the user interface is um, here, I believe. There it is. So let's refresh, and so we should be able to either log in with a, a users in that array. Uh, I don't remember what the users were. Um, let's see. The users in there were uh, Iron Man and Stark. Okay, so let's try and log in as Iron Man. So like that, and then Stark. Log in, um, okay, that didn't seem to work. Is the server running? Yeah, it is running. Uh, Iron Man. Let me see. Um, uh, console, host login 4.1. Yeah, password seems a little bit too long, right? Stark, login. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so so it logged in. Uh, this is retrieving the data from the uh, from the profile, right? In the network, we see that it's going out to the profile, right? In the localhost four thousand, uh, it's a post grabbing the profile. It's coming back with the currently logged in user. If I refresh right? It's still in the session. The session is remembering this logged in user. Yes. Right. And as long as I don't time out, right. And as long as I keep using the same cookie, right, it'll remember this uh, stored current user. Right. So let's, let's just revisit how we implemented this. Right? So the strategy was that um, uh, the, the, uh, the login basically received the username and password encoded right, as an object right, with the username and password properties and the values. We use that user, uh, maybe a better name would be credentials. Right? Maybe I think that might be a better name. All right, so let's actually, let's rename this. I think that might be a better name. So rename, so there's a uh, credentials, right? So from the body, it pulls out the username and password, the credentials, and checks to see if um, it's iterating over all the array, the array looking for a user whose username matches the credential username and the password matches the credential password. If the user exists, then we store it in our session object, right? So that we can remember in subsequent queries, right? Um, and then we just respond to the user with this existing user, right? Uh, the, the, what the user interface might do is store this object maybe in a global uh, reducer, right? Put it in a reducer so that now the the uh, you can navigate across multiple screens, right? Uh, go to the to the courses to the dashboard, for instance. You might navigate to the dashboard, and the dashboard knows who's logged in because it's in the reducer, right? And then it could go fetch courses only for that instructor, for instance. Yes. So as you navigate across the application. 
the whole application is remembering that this is a Chromium logged in user in the client. Yes? Um, and if you didn't find a user, then it would, you would get a, an invalid credentials. Okay. Um, now what we're doing on the, on the front end, you know, after we log in, notice that, right, if we look at our login implementation, notice that, uh, the way it works is that, you know, we fill in the username, we fill in the password, we click on login and then login uses the cl user client login, which, which is sending Right, it's sending the, the credentials. This, a better name for this would be credentials also, I think. Right, which contains the username and password, right? And then, and then this will contain either the error or, right, or the, um, uh, the, the fact that you are logged in, right? And what we do is that if this is successful, if this is successful, we just navigate, navigate to the profile. Otherwise, we stay, we don't navigate, right? we stay local because we, we couldn't find a user. Um, now, if we do navigate to the profile, what the profile does is that on load, on load, it fetches the user, right? It goes out to the, um, it goes out to the user client profile. Yes, this guy, uh, which is, does a post to user profile which on the server, it's basically retrieving the user from the current user, right, session. Right? Retrieves it because we just stored it in when we logged in, right? We logged in, we stored the current user in the session. Now we're reading from the session. If there's a user in the session, we sent back that user, right? Which we just recently put in there. Um, otherwise we say, oh, you came to the profile you know, in the wrong way, you know, somehow you would try to navigate to the profile, but you're not logged in, there's no one logged in. So I'm gonna kick you out to the, to the login, right? Um, and, and, so, and so, so this, when, we, we're, when we're now, uh, oops, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, because I restarted the server. I restarted the server and we crashed. Uh, let me see, Canvas. Uh, wait, what happened to the server? Did, did the server crash now? Is this still running? Uh, yeah, it's still running. What's going on? Uncaught runtime. Uh oh. Uh, working blah 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 blah. Key each child. Yeah, right now. Uh, map function key. Oh, I think I might have renamed something. <laughs> Let's stop. Let's restart. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Uh, Canvas, login, Ironman, login. Okay, and I refresh, and the profile is just sending these posts. Everybody good? You're still with me? Uh, same with register, right? If I log out and I try to go back to profile, note it. Um, it sent me a four hundred one, right? Send me a 401 uh, uh, login. And if I register and I register like a brand new user, uh, which, which I don't believe I have Alice, let's do Alice123, register. It creates this new object in the array, right? It puts it in the current session. And if I refresh, it's remembering Alice. Everybody good? Okay, so let's replace this, but with the database. Right? Notice that if I restart the server, if I restart the server, right? If I stop and I restart, Alice is no longer logged in, right? Right, it would fail. Right? It doesn't remember that Alice is indeed there. I couldn't even log in uh, as Alice. Uh, oh, 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 did I restart the server? It is. Uh, what's going on? Okay, all right, so let's replace it with a database. Let's, uh, let's go in the server and anywhere we, where we see db.users, right? We want to replace that with the database, with the database, the, the DAO, right? So we have the, the DAO, uh, let's see, uh, register. Let's, let's fix register. So first we're checking to see if the user name is already taken, yes? Right, 
Uh, so first, let's not forget to do an async, right? And the existing user, uh, we're going to use the DAO for this, right? We're going to say existing user await DAO.find user by username. So this is going out to the database to see if the username is already taken. It's going to come back and everything else is the same. Um, uh, but here, when we, instead of adding the, array, the user to the array, we don't want that, right? We want to instead, right? Instead, what we want to do is we want to create the new user with the DAO, create user, and then respond uh, with the new user, okay? All right, profile doesn't change, right? Because the profile has nothing to do with the database, right? It's all with the session remembering from one request to the next, you know, who is logged in, right? So it's not using the database, so we don't have to touch the profile. Login does use the database, right? So instead of, instead of looking for the existing user from the array, we're gonna use, we're gonna use the, um, the database like that, right? So the credentials come in, we break up the username and password, pass it into the credentials, we find the user, uh, but we forgot to put async await. So this will be async. And this will be a wait like that, right? And then the, it will come back with the username. If the user exists, we'll put them in the session, right? And then respond with the uh, existing user. Uh, otherwise we'll send a 401. And logout, logout doesn't do anything with the database. So we don't have to do anything with logout. Yes. All right. So hopefully uh, this is uh, enough. Let's go back and let's try it now to, um, to log in and register with uh, with users in the database though, right? So let's see, what did, what users do we have? Yes, okay, so we have Iron Man, so let's log in as Iron Man now again, hopefully. Log in. Okay, so this is this worked, and notice that the object is coming from, from the database, right? Notice the ID, right? That's coming from the database, um, date of birth, Right, that uh, it's trying to parse that string uh, into a date object. Um, and I used the wrong format for that string. That's why it's not able to parse it correctly. Um, and the, the role is taking the default student role. See that? And how about register? Let's, uh, let's log out. Now, Alice is not there, right? I don't believe Alice is there. So Alice, one, two, three. All right, it's just not letting me. So instead, I'm going to go register. I'm going to register as Alice. Alice is one, two, three, register, and that didn't work. Um, can I read properties on the phone? Uh, I think it might have actually worked. Let's see. Let's go in the database and let's refresh uh, the users. Uh, maybe not. Um, okay, Alice doesn't seem to have been inserted. Let's see. Let's try, try and see what's going on. Uh, can I read probably the, uh, can I, uh, okay. Uh, let's see, um, do I have the users refresh? Oh, I think the server crashed. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, the server crashed. Uh, user validation failed. Uh, so it, it probably happened is that I'm passing um, properties that uh, uh, I wasn't expecting. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, so register here, register, username, uh, existing user. Um, oh, yeah, we don't want an ID, right? Because the ID is going to be generated by the database, right? So we don't want to create our own uh, ID. So let's, let's comment that out. That's good. Right, the, 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 um, uh, also, the new user is what we want to store in the session. Right, the, the actual user that was created in the database is what we want to put in the session, not our little user object that we are receiving. That's only for uh, credentials, right? Uh, the, uh, the, and the fields, um, the, the, the username and password fields that we're creating, the new user is going to contain the new ID, right? Uh, also the default role of students, right? Probably also the default uh, date of birth. Let's see. All right, so let's try this again. Okay, and let's um, uh, go to register. Let's try Alice again. Uh, register, okay, so this time it worked. 
Um, let's um, let's see if uh, refresh the user. Okay, Alice is there. There we go. Right, Alice is there. Uh, but I wonder why this is uh, only has the it doesn't have the ID. Um, why doesn't have this ID? Interesting. Uh, let's see. Did I put it in the wrong place? So here's register body. Uh, new user. Oh, yeah, I put the wrong object in there. That's what we want to put in the current user, the actual user that was inserted in the database. Let's try that again. All right, so let's now log out and let's try Bob now. Bob and one, two, three. Oh, wait, Roger, register. Bob, one, two, three, register. Okay, there we go. Uh, this is the actual object that was inserted in the database, including username and password, uh, the role, the default role, and the ID. Yes? All right, excellent. So this is working. Um, yeah, so we can register. We can log in. Actually, let's see that. Let's see if I can log out and see if I can log in as Alice. Oh, yeah, so this is, a, this is an internal object for Mongo. Mongo, for internal purposes, maintains a version, right, as it, as it modifies and, and uh, yeah, does indexing and all that internally. Yeah, that's a variable for its own internal purpose. Yeah. Yeah, so I was able to log in as Alice, and I should be able to also log in as Bob. There we go. So I can log in as either one of them. Yes? All right. Excellent. So that works. Uh, so, so now let's... Uh, Let's take a look at uh, being able to uh, manipulate the profile, right? Being able to maybe update the profile, add a first name, last name, other things like that, right? So let's do that. Uh, so for instance, in the profile, in the um, in the profile here, right? Let's uh, let's add a a um, we already have a a state variable that should allow us to manipulate the uh, the uh, the user. Well, let's add a few other fields, right? Maybe let's add a, you know, first name, right? Let's add a last name, right? And then let's uh, add a a, um, uh, a form here that would allow us to uh, edit this, right? So we have um, um, maybe an input field that allows us to edit the first name, an input field for the last name. Uh, which at first should be empty, right? There are there is no username and password. Uh, there is no first name and last name, uh, and um, and so let's provide maybe an object where we can save, right? Maybe a, a button for saving, uh, and we can handle that here. You know, const uh, update user. Um, we can use the update that probably doesn't exist currently in our client, but we'll implement that in a minute. Right, and we'll have a, a button here to save, right, update uh, that um, uh, update user doesn't exist. So let's create uh, the update user. So in the client, we we're going to put, right, because remember on the server, the update, the update is a put. So we're going to have to call this right here. We're, we're going to have to encode the ID of the user that we want to update and in the body, we're going to have to pass in the updates, which will include probably the first name and last name, right? Uh, and and then we were, we're, it's going to be delegated to our DAO, and our DAO is going to delegate it to our user model update one, which will you know identify that particular record, right? And it will update only those fields for which the object contains. In our case, probably we'll just pass in the first name and last name. Okay, All right. So let's do that. So let's implement this update that doesn't exist yet. So let's go to our client. And we don't have an update, right? Yeah, we don't have an update. So let's do that. Uh, the update, so it's going to be you know, export const update uh, user. So there's our user object, which presumably contains also the primary key. Let's see. Does it contain also the primary key? Uh, it doesn't, right? So let's, uh, let's make sure that... Um, we have a placeholder for the ID as empty, and and um and so we're going to uh, Axios with credentials. Very good. Put there we go. So we're going to go out to the um, a, a API users, and then and then we have to encode here the primary key. 
right? So instead of update here, we're going to need to put the user ID here, user dot underscore ID. Okay. Uh, and the next is the uh, um, parameter is the actual object, right? And the response is just status, status information. And the status information should typically come back saying, yeah, we were able to update or no, we didn't find any user that matched that. Okay. All right. So let's try it out. Let's see if there's uh, if this uh, breaks. Uh, let's look at the inspect the uh, communication between the two uh, network. Let's see. Uh, so here's Bob and doesn't have a first name. So we'll say, um, uh, Robert, uh, Marley. So let's do an update. So this update, let's see. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's really succeeded. Let's see. Let's see. Um, this is what we sent. Okay. Notice that this is what the response from the server, right? The response from the server, right? This is the, this is the header that we sent. Here's our put that went out the ID of the user, right? In the payload, we see what we sent. This is what we sent, right? The password, the role, the username. Uh, looks like we didn't pass the first name and last name. Huh? Did we? I guess we didn't pass the username and password. Uh, we didn't pass in the username, uh, the, the, the first name and last name. Uh, looks like we forgot to do that in our user interface. Let's see. Um, okay, no, we were only, we were only displaying the values of the first name and last name. We were never updating the state variable. Right, so we need to update. Obviously, let's try it again. So this will be, you know, on change. Right, e um, set user. Right, we're going to override the uh, user, and then we're going to update the first name to be the e dot target dot value. Okay, so same thing with the last name. So this will be, um, so this is a uh, last name. There we go. Okay. Wait, how were, how were we able to edit it? Value, user, first name, user, last name. Huh? If we didn't have that, refresh. Okay, okay. Uh, notice that it still remembers that we are logged in, right? It still remembers that we are logged in. Uh, let's try this again. Let's send in uh, Robert. Okay, notice that it is indeed rendering locally, Robert Marley. Before it wasn't. Uh, let's send an update again. Okay, we can see what we, okay, there's the post. Okay, this time around, we did send the first name and last name, right? We did send the first name and last name. And um, if we look at the, um, uh, we, that came back from the server, the server said that yes, uh, the, the one matched uh, and one was modified, right? So we can see in the data, we can check in the database, looking for Bob here, refresh. Uh, let's see, uh, there's Bob. I noticed that it has the first name and last name. See that? So it was able to uh, update it. Perfect. Uh, but notice that if I refresh here, if I refresh, notice that it doesn't have the first name and last name. See that? Why is that? Well, remember that profile is retrieving what? The profile, right, from the server is retrieving um, here in the routes. The profile is always returning whatever is in the session. Yes? So it's remembering, you know, whenever you register, whenever you logged in, there was no first name and last name. We updated it. It's in the database. But the session is still remembering our old version of the profile. You see that? So we always have to make sure that if we change in the state somewhere, whatever was already stored in the session, we need to update the session too. Okay. So, so here in the... Um, in our update here, uh, in our update, in our put, right? Um, once we update it, okay, 
uh, we have to make sure to to update also the um, the object, right? So we can say um, we can say uh, and and, I, and we only want to do it if someone is logged in, right? We don't just because we're updating make them the current logged in user, right? So so first you know say uh, current user current user so retrieve. So if it exists, right? If current user exists. Then we want to update it, right? We want to say, you know, um, 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 request dot session current user. I'm going to update it, right? Including the username and password and every uh, the first name and last name that you just typed, right? So if somebody's logged in, update the current user to be user. All right, let's try it out. Let's try this out. Uh, let's um, let's go. Let's try logging in as Alice. Actually, let's log in as as as, uh, as Bob again. Uh, we should see those changes because it's going to retrieve it again. It's going to log us back in. It's going to retrieve the new user again from the database, and, and we should see the updates. There we go. See that Robert or Mar Robert uh, Bob Marley, right? We we're able to retrieve it from the database. It updated the current user, and it's setting there. So notice that if I refresh now, notice that it's properly updated from the database, right? In the, in the current user. Uh, but now it wasn't doing it when we actually updated it, right? Because it was remembering the old one. It, this is because it, it loaded it brand new from the database, right? Let's see if uh, we fixed it for for all objects, if I want to update. So here's Alice, login is Alice. Let's update Alice, see if that works. So um, Alicia, uh, Wonderland, and, and um, update, right? If I refresh, Notice that it remembers the changes. See that? Because we updated it in the current user session, right? Perfect, excellent. So there we have, so we can update, the database is updated. Uh, it's, it's synchronized with the uh, session. Uh, so, so those are some of the, the, the challenges, right? That we are now dealing with data that lives in several places, right? It lives in the database, it lives in the session, right? Uh, it lives back in the user, user interface. And we have to make sure that everything's in synchronicity. Right, that that uh, we are we're maintaining data uh, you know, spread out across multiple layers. Yes, and and at every point we need to make sure that uh, they're all they're all consistent. Right? Um, okay, so so uh, let's uh, let's do something a little more generic, uh, where you know if I am a system administrator, for instance, uh, I would like to be able to modify any user, right? And based on my role. So if I'm a system administrator, I should be able to you know, have access to my, you know, system administrator screen. If not, no, right? So let's, let's take a look at that. Um, so, so let's, uh, let's create a, um, in the front end, let's create a, uh, an admin uh, here maybe. Um, so we'll, we'll call the, the admin, uh, oops. Maybe we'll create a, a directory admin uh, and under admin um, we can create maybe a, a user list or, or a user table right and and this user table is presumably will be only accessible to administrators where they can see a list of, t of users they can add new users remove users you know change their role maybe you can make somebody as, as an admin right and, and make other others uh, for a particular role. So let's um, uh, let's uh, do a um, you know export default function user table and you know return for now user table there we go something like that right uh, and um, and let's add them to our um, account index right so that um, uh, we could say you know route path and if you say you know admin uh, we go to an admin screen which we don't have so let's create an admin screen under here so it'll be index.tsx this is um you know export default function admin so here's my admin screen so this uh admin 
and let's import admin. Um, and in admin, we might have you know, access to a whole bunch of different things, including uh, the, the user table, right? The user table like that, all right? Uh, okay, so, and how do I get there? Well, from my profile. From my profile, I should be able to navigate with a link uh, from React Router DOM, right? And um, I might have a link down here that says um, link, canvas, account, admin, something like that. Right, so if I click on admin, it goes to my user table. And then in my user table, um, I can fetch all the users, display them here, right? I can update them, delete. Um, you know, I have a, I've got powers, right? I can do whatever I want to users. All right, so how do we do that? So, so in my user table, in my user table, um, I might want to be able to fetch all my users, right? And display them in a local state variable. So const uh, users uh, initially empty. Uh, I like to be able to fetch all these users from the user client, which I believe we have that already, don't we? I think we have in the user client. Do we have a fetch all users? Looks like we don't, right? So um, we do have an endpoint for that, right? We do have an endpoint, this one. If we do a get right, to API users, it should retrieve all the users from the database, yes? So let's create that in the client side. So here in the client, you know, we can say, you know, export, yeah, get all users, uh, access.get, API users, I think that's it, right? And respond with the data, perfect, excellent. So in the user table, we can import that client. So import start as user client, and uh, is that where it is? Um, let's see, I think it's dot dot slash, slash, and then users, then client, there we go. Uh, so we want to fetch all the users, get all the users, it's gonna do client, get users, it's gonna set the users, perfect, right? And we're gonna call this in our use effect, right? When we first load, use effect, when we first load, uh, we're gonna call get, get users. It's gonna populate our array, and here we're gonna display them uh, like a table, right? And the head, maybe we'll display maybe the username, first name and last name. Let's do those first. And, um, and then in the body, we're gonna iterate over the, the, uh, the array, displaying the Username, first name, and last name. T body. There we go. There we are. Right. So the the user interface went out to the database. Right. Uh, went to the to the user to the uh, uh, to the endpoint. We can see the, uh, the 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 network communication here. Right. Users right there. Right. It went out. It retrieved the objects. It stored them in the local state variable. And then we just iterate it and displayed it, right? Um, maybe we can dress it up a little bit. This is a class name, maybe just table. Yeah, just dress it up a little bit. Uh, and so for instance, we would like to be able to do various CRUD operations, right? We want to be able to remove a user, create a new user. Uh, so let's play around with that a little bit. Right? So for instance, to create new users, probably we need to have a form where we can type in at least the username and password at least, right? Uh, so let's do that. Uh, so, so here in the user interface, right, maybe we can create a new row above it, right, where we can create a, um, here, a, uh, an input field where we can type in the name of the user. So we'll create an, an input field here uh, of the user so we can edit it. We can edit the first name, last name, uh, so we have the input field here, the input uh, where we can type in the um, uh, username and something like that, where we can type in the username uh, and um, we can do, you know, on change, uh, edit the, the username so we can type in the username. 
Uh, we'll need something similar for the password. Right, and, um, and this probably needs to be of type password. So you can, you, folks can't read what you're typing. And we're gonna update the password. So there it is, to use my username and password, maybe put them side by side, make them 50% each so they can fit side by side maybe. Oh, um, do we need to float this maybe, float end? Uh, put them backwards. There we go, so they're side by side so that I can type it. Right, so, and then maybe a, a button that I can click on plus so that I can, I can post this new user to the server. The server will insert into the database, right? And I should be able to see it back here, right? So let's do that. Uh, notice we have Alice, Bob, the new users are there. Um, so so let's, um, let's add a button that we can, we can click on. Maybe, um, maybe the last, um, we can have a, an empty uh, column at the end. Right, um, and so let's see, let's uh, create here another, another column, and maybe one last column, and here put um, an object, a button that we can say, you know, add, right? And then we can create that user. Uh, so that user, right, this, this add uh, should, we're gonna do the handler here, const, Add user. Uh, well, not register. Uh, we, we need to a we need to have a create user, which we don't have, right? We don't have a create user, so let's create one. So let's go into our client, and we need a post, right? We need to do a x cons create user user, which is going to do a post to user API perfect user, yeah. And this presumably is going to be the new user that we insert. Right, uh, so this user is posting here, right, right here, this post that creates the new user, right? We're posting here. The bot is gonna contain the username and password only, right? It's gonna insert into the database and it's gonna return the new user that was just inserted into the database. But we're not logged in as that person, right? We're just creating into a database, right? Uh, whatever we were logged in as before, we're still logged in as that person, okay? Uh, so, so yeah, so this post, is sending the, the data right here and we insert in the database, right? So what comes back is the new user, right? So, um, so yeah, so this, what comes back here is the new user. So const new user right here. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to, um, we're going to append the new user to the array that we already have. I'm gonna say, you know, set users to be the old users, um, and then appending the new user. Um, what is it complaining about? Users, uh, type any, yada, 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 is not assignable to type. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, we probably need a type here. Um, type user. ID, username, password, first name, last name, like that. And um, and then I'm guessing that uh, this needs to be of type user, maybe. And okay, I think that's happy. It's happy now. Uh, okay, so let's try that. This is going to do the create which is gonna do the post. The post is gonna return the new user and we're gonna add the new user at the end of the array in the user interface. We could have, instead of done that, right? We could have done a, a, a subsequent query, right? You know, I just inserted this object, right? Uh, into the array, into the database. Well, fetch them again, right? And then repopulate the array, but that would be very expensive, right? Imagine these would be hundreds of documents I'm adding a new document, so 101, and to refresh my front end, I would just have to re, you know, re ask for the 101 documents. It'd be very expensive. Instead, here I'm assuming that 
you still have 100 users. I'm adding one. And, and you know, once you come back with, with an acknowledgement that, that, that says, yes, I was able to insert this, I'm going to populate my local user interface with this new object that you just sent me. Yes. Right. Yep. Right. So that that's why. Right. So I, I am making sure that uh, just like the database now has a new user in the database, here I want to synchronize, and I, I am I am um, a, optimistically assuming that the database successfully added it. So I'm going to try and maintain what the user what the database is doing. Now this only works if if it's just me who is logged in. I'm the only system administrator who is manipulating this. If you have multiple system administrators uh, and one of them is adding two users, another one is adding three and whatever, I'm always working with a stale version of the list of users. I, will, I would only see the users that I added, right? I would not see an updated version of all the users unless I either refresh the whole screen, right? Or better yet, we would use sockets. You know, sockets would allow you to have inter inter-browser communication <laughs> where each browser tells hey uh, i got two users here update which we don't we're not covering <laughs> yeah a refresh would would reset the whole thing with the latest from the server yep yeah and this is a very common problem right it, you know if you're going to buy tickets for a concert or on a on a plane or a movie Right, what you're looking at, the user interface is always stale, right? Because there's other 20 people looking at the same screen and somebody is looking at the, some old representation of what the reality is, right? Because there might be you know, three or other folks who have chosen a seat that you also check, right? And so last one wins. No, sorry, first one wins. You know, first one wins and then when you cl cl click it, um, you know, say, oh, sorry, it's too late. Uh, now, obviously, in databases, you might have covered, you know, certain strategies to deal uh, with this, with shared data. You know, one one of the one of the strategies is that you you lock everybody out. It says, okay, well, what you're looking at is the reality. I am locking everybody out, right? So until you decide what to do, right, I won't let anybody else touch this. So you are guaranteed to be looking at the latest, and you're the only one touching this, right? So that's that you know that works if it's just a few of us maybe, right? But if you're talking about hundreds of people looking at this, right? Then it would be everybody would just be waiting on each other, right? You might as well just give everybody on a queue, right? And then everybody comes in at the in the order that they came in, right? The other strategy is like, well, I'll deal with the worst case scenario later, right? Uh, and I'll use social cues for this, where you you go in for a seat that was free. And then, you know, and then reality hits and says, well, no, actually, it's not free. Sorry. Oops. And, 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 and then, well, everybody says, okay, well, I understand the, uh, the, the difficulties of handling this. And so there's different strategies, right? So here we're taking an optimistic uh, view of this, right? Understanding that, yeah, it might, it might be stale if you have multiple users manipulating the same data structure. Yes. Uh, so, so, yeah, so let's... Uh, Let's invoke this on the with the button. We're going to say, you know, on click. We're going to do the add uh, user, and add user is going to post the new user to a database. Right, the database is going to insert the new user. Right, it's going to respond with the new user. It's going to come back in the data, um, and and then we're going to have the new user here. We're going to add it to our local array. And so we should see it at the bottom of our array. So let's try it out. Let's see if this blows up. Um, so here we have, uh, we have Alice, Bob. Uh, let's do uh, Dan. One, two, three, add. Okay, it broke. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Axios, error, blah, 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 blah. Uh, add user async. Uh, let's see. Well, let's see if the database actually made it. 
Okay, so it did not add it. All right, let's see what's going on. Uh, the server failed. Validation. Uh, okay, so something with our validation. Uh, let's see what we sent. Let's see what we sent. Actually, what do we send? Here's our here's our here's our posts. Looks like this is a um, header. Here's our option. Here's our post. Let's see what we sent. Um, maybe the ID. Maybe the ID it didn't like the ID. Uh, let's uh, let's let's see at the at the server. Uh, here's the post. Okay, probably this user object has the ID field in there because we sent it as empty. So we might want to remove it to make sure that we don't try to insert with the ID. So we're gonna do. Um, we're going to do a delete user dot underscore ID. Make sure that it's not in there. If, it, if, if the field came in from the user interface, we don't want it. We can fix this in two places. We can fix it in the front end, make sure that we don't send the ID, right? Or on the server to validate and make sure we don't have that ID, right? Um, either way, probably best place to do it in both places. So let's try this again. Right, so admin, there we go. Uh, we don't have Dan, so let's let's try and add Dan here. Uh, so Dan, uh, one, two, three, add. Uh, again, failed. We're sending the ID. Uh, let's uh, let's see. Okay, so okay, so it looks like this is a different issue. Uh, delete. Oh. Um, Reference users is not defined. User, oh, users, ah, oh, user, sorry. Let's try it again. Uh, okay, Dan is not there. Let's see, Dan. One, two, three, add. Okay, so this time it did Okay, it looks like Dan was created. There it is. Uh, let's check to see in the database. Let's refresh. Okay, 12. So Dan should be in there. So Dan was created with the correct password. Uh, so presumably I should be able to, uh, to log in as Dan. Doesn't have a first name and last name. Uh, so one of the things I would like to be able to do is edit a user, right? Maybe I want to be able to change their first name and last name. Uh, so I'd like to be able to retrieve that user. Like for instance, be able to edit Iron Man and whatnot, right? Uh, so let's, let's add a, like a pencil here or like an edit button. Uh, so what we'll need to do is, is populate the front end with the information that we have and let you edit the fields and then click on a, like an, an update button, okay? So let's do that. So let's, um, in the user interface, right, we'll add a, an edit button on each one of these, right? So maybe in the end here, we'll do a TD, you know, edit, like a button edit. Okay, uh, there it is. Uh, and when we click on it, what we'll do is that we'll copy the information up here so that you can edit it, All right? So um, let's see, uh, we're going to, you know, uh, on click, we're going to, we're going to, you know, set the user to be the current user that I'm iterating over. Right, so if I click on Dark Knight, uh, it doesn't work. Wait, what? Uh, set user, user, uh, on click, blah, 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 set user, set user, use state, username, and password. Why aren't you working? Let's see, edit, no. Um, on click. On click, set user, user. Wait, are we even, let me see, alert? <laughs> Hello, you're live? Okay, so it is live, okay. Um, you know, on click, set user, user. Uh, any, maybe this is type uh, user. And set user is of type user. 
Uh, edit. Hmm. Why is that not updating it? Um, let's uh, add uh, the other fields as well. Let's add the other fields here. So this would be first name, input um, uh, value. This would be the um, a user dot first name. Um, well, no, I don't have it. Uh, I don't have it inside of a form, so it doesn't matter. If, but yes, very, very good, right? So if it, if it were inside of a form, then yes, it would. This would have to be a type button. Yeah, good catch. Uh, so that's the first name, and uh, and this would be the last name. Last name. Um, and um, okay, this oh Steve Rogers. Oh, okay. So all right, so that's working. If that's working, why not my username and password? What's going on? Uh, so the value. Oh, I never, I never put a value here. Duh. <laughs> value user dot uh, username, and this is. I hate computers. They always do exactly what they're told. Well, maybe not now with the AI, huh? Okay, so I should be able to now, yes, yeah, set the values, right? And so I should be able to edit them. Well, actually, no, not yet. Um, we're gonna we're gonna make this editable. So the these input fields, I'm gonna make them editable. So it says uh, on change, blah blah blah, e, you know, set user to be the dot user, and then I'm changing the last name uh, to be e dot target dot value, right? And we'll do the same thing for the first name. So this is the first name, right? Um, and then we're gonna put a button here to to uh, to update but, uh, the user, right? So update the user, update the user. So this would be update the user, which doesn't exist. Uh, and so we're gonna handle that here. We say update the user, const update user, uh, which is going to say user client update user, and and we're going to we need, we need to reconstruct the array the local array right we get we to with the updated user uh, so we're going to say you know set user set users it's going to iterate over the map right and once I find the user it's going to update the user with the new first name last name blah 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 right um if it's successful what about update user update user uh is going to do a put right it's going to do a put with the id uh we have to make sure on the that we don't have the same issue that we had earlier right in the put the id might come in right the id might come in so we have to make sure the same thing we did here right you know remove from the user that the underscore id Right, current user, yada yada yada, session, yada yada, update, update user, ID user. Okay, all right. Uh, let's try it out. Let's see if it works. Right. So let's um, update. Let's uh, update Tony. Uh, Antonio. Uh, so let's um, let's clear this. So let's update. See if this fails. Okay, that looks. Um, Oh, it updated locally. Let's see. Uh, okay, so the updated that came back. So this is what we sent to the server. This is what we sent to the server. Uh, first name Antonio, preview. So the server came back saying, uh, yeah, there was one that was modified. One document was modified. It was successful, presumably. Let's see in the database if that's true. Let's uh, refresh. And and Tony's first name was updated to Antonio. Make sense, right? And uh, and finally, let's try out something else like uh, being able to to delete a user, right? So let's let's um let's create like a delete button for each one of these. 
right? So that, so that uh, for instance, in the, in the uh, each one of these will have a delete button, right? So it'll be maybe a delete button here, where it says uh, delete, right? And then we're gonna call a delete user. We'll pass in the user object. Delete user we don't have, let's, so let's implement that. Uh, so it'll be, you know, const delete user, user object. So it's gonna call the user client and we're gonna have to filter it, our user interface, remove that user from our local direct, from our local array. Delete user doesn't exist in the client, so let's create it in the client. So let's create the delete here. So it'll be export, there we go. The, the ID, wait, do I, the ID of the user. So user, I'll pass in the ID of the user I want to remove. And the delete user is going to send a delete. We're going to encode the ID at the end of the URL. Perfect. That's exactly what the you uh, the server is expecting, right? We're trying to hit this this endpoint right here, right? We're trying to hit that endpoint at that delete, and the it's expecting the ID of the user at the end of the path. Right? We're going to parse it out, right, and call the DAO delete user with the ID. Okay. Um, all right, so let's try it out. Uh, are we calling delete? Yeah, delete user, blah, blah, blah. It's passing the ID to the delete user. It's 